Hi guys, uh, we've had a lot of interest in uh, our homemade suppressor and suppressors in general, so we wanted to go ahead and do a video uh, where we're going to take both of these apart side by side, and we're going to give uh, a little bit of a rundown on how, how a, um, a baffle based suppressor works versus how a monocore suppressor works. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take apart this Liberty uh, Kodiak TL. I had it already loosened. Um, just for make it easier for the video. And I dropped the end cap, but that's not really important right now. Um, I am gonna have to use my bar to get this out. There we go. So it's Pretty dirty. It's been a while since I cleaned this. Got some lead and powder built up. Um, obviously not uncommon for a 22 long rifle suppressor. So that's what the inside of the uh, Liberty looks like. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side. And I'm going to go ahead and take apart our homemade freeze plug suppressor, which is uh, what we would consider a baffle based system. Um, and I'm going to make sure I keep these in the same order. Uh, that I had them um, to make sure everything goes back the way I want it to. And the reason I'm doing this over a towel is not only because uh, there's a lot of stuff I don't want to get on the floor and the animals or dogs or possibly kids can get at, um, lead and powder build up but um, also it's a, it's a nice background for this so this is the inside of the homemade suppressor these are obviously the freeze plugs and we have two spacers um, this is what you would consider your expansion chamber uh, this is the side that the muzzle of the rifle would be on and the bullet comes from this direction as such and then we have another expansion chamber up here um, so sort of the rationale behind this design is when you first fire your round your cartridge um, well your powder is going to ignite and expand it's going to create those hot gases and it's going to force your bullet forward through the holes and all of these well what makes all of your noise um, assuming it's subsonic and you're not creating a supersonic boom, what's making your noise from the actual rifle is the expansion of those gases and how quickly they're coming out of your muzzle. Um, that loud and quick expansion is what will hurt your ears. And so what we're doing here is we're giving them room, those gases room to expand with uh, this expansion area. And then we are restricting how quickly those gases can escape with these baffles. Um, and the reason they are designed um, and somewhat cone shaped is we want those gases to um, roll off that cone and come back and help uh, create back pressure so that the gases behind it um, can't continue to accelerate as well. Um, so that's the idea behind the cone design. And you can see we have a lot of those. And then the idea behind this second expansion chamber is we want to add a little bit more volume downstream from these so that if there is still a lot of pressure, once uh, those gases uh, reach this point, we want an area for them to be able to expand again to sort of relieve that pressure, um, which will in turn uh, give us a quieter suppressor. So that's the idea behind uh, a baffled system. Now, the idea behind a monocore system has a, some very similar principles, basically the same. Um, and I can't, I can't speak on behalf of Liberty for why and how they designed this, but the idea here is that they are causing gases to roll off of the um, path of the bullet. Um, and expand in different areas 
uh, to slow how quickly they can escape uh, the end of the suppressor, which again is what creates, um, which what, what is what muffles uh, the noise of firing your rifle. Um, so again, I can't speak on the behalf of their design, but you can see this is a very sharp edge here. I'm guessing to trap gases and try and bring them back around. And we don't really see that again, but we do see a lot of different shaped chambers um, where those gases can bleed off and go. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys found this helpful. The only other um, real type of suppressor that we didn't cover in this is the older suppressors, which are basically, I'm gonna try and be an artist here. Basically they're a tube like this inside of another tube sort of like this where this inner tube which in a lot of cases was the actual barrel itself would have holes which would allow your gases to escape into this much larger chamber and then this chamber would be filled with a sound dampening material sometimes that was steel wool sometimes it was other things so really it doesn't matter which way the bullet goes through this tube but for the sake of the example let's say the bullet starts its path this way this direction starts on this end and comes out this end well the gases that are pushing behind that bullet that's a bullet um the gases that are pushing behind that bullet are going to bleed off through these holes as it travels through and then as they bleed off into those holes uh, there's going to be the sound dampening material that's going to absorb a lot of that um, that expansion, but also the heat off these gases. And so, um, as you might know from basic uh, science classes, gases that are hot tend to want to ex they expand. Gases that are cold constrict. And so, by being able to absorb the heat in this sound dampening material on the outside of that tube. Uh, those gases no longer want to expand as rapidly as they once did. And so you're transferring the energy that would normally come out of this uh, behind the bullet and the suppressor itself is absorbing it. Now that happens with both of these designs as well, but not to the same degree. Um, so also you can run them wet. Yeah, and so what a lot of people will do not with not with these but with your monocores or your baffled systems you can use um, water or other substances that are designed to absorb the heat off of those gases uh, which increases how well that suppressor can dampen noise that being said uh, one of your factors as well for dampening noise is volume in the tube um, so that water will take up some of the volume within that tube uh, so you there is a point of diminishing returns when running a suppressor wet but you can do it with a lot of your suppressors um, so as you can see the liberty suppressor is a lot smaller um, a lot more efficient than the baffle based suppressor that we built um, I don't know that that necessarily means that the baffle designs are less effective compared to monocore. I don't believe that to be true. Uh, I believe, you know, obviously when you're making something yourself, um, most of us have restrictions on what we can and can't do with machining and things along those lines. Um, so, but I, I do know when you start talking about K baffles and things like that, they, they seem to be very effective with how they operate um, and you can get suppressors this size in the K baffle that will be just as effective um, but again with the limited resources that we have uh, this is the size that we decided to build with and obviously with this being a D cell sized um, tube there was a lot of information and pieces out there available that made doing this easier also there's wipers 
There, there is wiper wipers. suppressor, so let's go over wipers. So, start over here. So essentially, what you'll what a wiping suppressor does is you'll have a tube that attaches to a barrel. The bullet's going to come from this direction. Now, they have um, different pieces of material, sometimes rubber um, or could be even cotton. You're, so this is how your oil uh, suppressors or your oil filter suppressors would work. They're, they're a wiping type of suppressor. Um, your bullet's going to go through here and on its first shot is going to penetrate those layers. And they operate, uh, wiping operates in a very similar fashion to how a baffle works. However, your holes are going to be a lot tighter on this because you didn't drill the holes before the bullet went through. The bullet actually made the hole itself. Um, and because of that, your first round through here is not going to be very accurate. Also, rounds through here uh, long term aren't going to be very accurate as well because they're going to be touched by each one of these wipes at least a little bit. And as you use this suppress type of suppressor more and more, um, it becomes less and less effective because those holes tend to get larger and larger as time goes on. And so with an oil filter suppressor, um, you would have to replace that oil filter and start over again. Whereas uh, the other designs that we talked about are a longer term solution. Um, but this is what a, a suppressor that uses wipes would be. And then there's also hybrid suppressors where they'll use uh, your pieces like this and they'll have wipes at the end. At the very end? At the very end. Yeah. And I, I know, um, not that I have a whole lot of, or any really military background, but I know when you have seals going in that are using suppressors, one thing they will do is um, they'll add tape to the end of the cover of this hole. And they don't really, they don't use wipe suppressors. Um, but on any of the suppressors, they'll cover that, that hole with tape so that you don't get water in here before you start uh, engaging. Um, because that would be, uh, too again, too much water, it would be detrimental uh, to operation. There is a um, gases a don't expand in water, right? Um, there is a, an, a point of diminishing return when adding water to a suppressor, or as you would say, running it wet. And the same is to be said for any barrel, also, right? You don't want water in your barrel, that is not a good thing. But um, if there's any other types of suppressors that you would like us to go over that we didn't mention, um, or you have any questions in general about how any of these work. Uh, feel free to leave a comment and we hope you, you know, found this informational um, and you enjoyed it. So make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks.